Hey everyone and welcome to this video. My name is Davey Baker. I'm an illustrator and concept artist working in the entertainment industry. Um, I've had a bunch of roles over the years that have included concept art for film, uh, computer games, illustration work for card games, board games. One thing that I don't have any experience with um, is animation. So <laughs> this is a, uh, a completely new thing to me. Yet I've been able to quickly produce something in my own painterly style that I'm really happy with. And hopefully I can prove to you that a complete beginner can produce something very quickly that, um, that has a professional feel to it. So first of all, as a beginner, how easy is it to use? Well, You'll be pleased to hear it's extremely easy. Once you've established a few basics, you're free to explore all of the potential that Cartoon Animator has to offer. You don't even need to be able to draw because you can drag in existing characters from their asset library. Getting started with your own characters is also easy. Uh, you can drag your files in or open them and then place them inside your scene. A beginner's tip for you, always make sure that you're at the beginning of your uh, playback on your timeline when bringing new assets into your scene, otherwise things may just appear halfway through. So what tools did I use and find useful when creating my uh, first animation sequence? Um, well, the first thing I'd like to show you is a new tool and that's the FFD editor. This is a new feature which allows you to manually customise your image similar to a mesh transform tool that you may be familiar with if you've ever used a paint programme. First select an object that you want to edit then click on the FFD icon in the functional toolbar and you will open this panel. You can move this around if it's uh, covering anything that you, you want to see. As soon as this window opens you will see a blue grid appear and these grey dots at the intersections that can be dragged around and you can distort your image. There are also lots of settings to look through here and lots of presets. For me I found this tool particularly useful when creating a subtle movement on this hanging banner. I wanted to give the impression that there was there was a breeze blowing through this opening and the FFD editor made it simple to take a square edged image and distort the shape and form throughout the scene. A keyframe is created every time you move one of these grey points. Then you can scrub along the timeline and make another adjustment. If you ever need to move or edit these keyframes, you can still slide them around, you can delete them. You can also right click and open this transition curve screen. This has a, a bunch of useful presets which will help the transition between the previous and currently selected keyframe. The potential for this tool is endless and although manually creating keyframes and adjusting them by hand may seem like it's slow, imagine drawing each frame traditionally. There would be hundreds. This would also be impossible for me to do. The texture would jump around and you would end up with a glitchy result. It just simply wouldn't work. The fact that this tool now exists makes it a lot easier for artists like myself to be able to create animations with a painterly textured style. Another tool new to Cartoon Animator 5 which I would like to cover is the motion pilot. The flux settings were something I particularly enjoyed playing around with. I had a lot of fun uh, testing different uh, flight paths with this tool and basically you're animating in real time. What that means is you're taking the cursor and dragging it around on the screen. The actor, the bird in this case, will follow the cursor in real time. So you don't have to move them around frame by frame and it's just incredibly quick. Now with this particular setting, you can select a, a lead bird out of um, say we've got a group of five birds here and then you can box select on the on the rest of them and apply selected objects this will enable all of those birds to animate all at the same time 
to add a little bit more realism you can use the uh, random selection on the follow delay type and then each bird will have slightly delayed um, reaction to the turns that you might make as you drag the cursor around on the screen. I did try it with a, a bunch of characters um, using a walk cycle so I was able to make a crowd of people walk across the screen. It was extremely quick and really effective. So my characters within the scene, I wanted them to walk across the screen. I was able to easily achieve this by selecting some of the dummy actors, replace parts with my own. Once I'd swapped out all the parts that I wanted to use, I could then apply a pre-made animation from the library. This was extremely quick to do. This saved me tons of time of trial and error and the, uh, the walk cycle is obviously a professional standard and a way better job than I would have been able to do if I'd just sat there probably for weeks trying to, trying to create a nice smooth walk cycle. Overall, my experience using Cartoon Animator for the first time as a beginner, um, I've found it to be absolutely amazing. It does everything that I need it to do and way more. I was pleasantly surprised that there was so much more that I hadn't even thought of and it's helped me to quickly get through my ideas and produce this final result. So now I can't wait to produce more with Cartoon Animator. I'm really excited about using all the other tools. I hope you found this brief overview useful and I wish you happy animating. Thanks for watching. Thank you.